Hello everyone, um, in this video we're going to be looking at critical path analysis, uh, the purpose of this project management tool, uh, as well as a walkthrough using a simple example. Um, so critical path analysis often looks very intimidating and looks very technical, um, but it is actually really quite simple and straightforward. Um, it is just simple mathematics rather than any complex calculations, um, and it's also uh, something where the complexity can be very easily broken down so you can undertake it step by step and it is relatively uh, uh, st straightforward to actually do despite having you know if you have a complex project with lots and lots of different activities these steps are still going to be the same. Uh, so if we first define CPA, uh, so it's a method of identifying uh, tasks which must be completed on time for the project to be completed on time. Uh, so that is the critical path. So when you find the critical path in your project, that critical path is referring to that sequence of activities uh, which cannot be delayed. That if any of those are delayed, then your project is delayed. Um, so as uh, as part of this, you're also then identifying those tasks which can be delayed uh, without actually making your project delivery late. So these tasks or activities have what we call slack or float. So there's some slack in when those are done um, that they can actually be done uh, later than originally planned uh, without having an overall delay to your entire project. Uh, this is not a standalone tool, however, so we're building upon uh, already completed uh, work breakdown structure, uh, an already completed activity list, and a network diagram. Uh, so for our simple example, we're going to revisit these three and then go forward and calculate the critical path for our simple example project. Uh, so we have a work breakdown structure here leading to a single project deliverable uh, and we have uh, four specific uh, activities which are going to go into our activity list because they are the four activities uh, at the lowest level of each uh, branch. So we're going to label those activities A, B, C and D uh, and we can see from our activity list that we have estimated durations for each of those activities in days. So three, four, six and two days. We also have preceding activities as well. So the preceding activities allows us to create a simple network diagram that looks like this. We start with activity A, then we move on to B and C, which can be run in parallel. And then we finish with activity D. Now we can see here that we have squares around each of the uh, the codes, the activity codes, and that's because we're going to fill these in with a range of numbers, and we're going to look through those numbers one by one. Uh, this is where uh, critical path analysis often seems intimidating, but it is relatively simple maths. It's just a matter of wrapping your head around it, and then it's quite simple to actually calculate. So we're first going to look at each of the uh, individual squares, and then we're going to go ahead and calculate the critical path for each of our uh, uh, calculate the critical path for this network diagram. Uh, so if we take a square and make it larger. Uh, well, at the middle of the square, we're going to have the, the activity code itself, so the unique activity code that we have on our uh, activity list. Uh, alongside this to the right, so the middle right square, uh, we're going to place the duration of that particular activity. Uh, so in this case, the duration is in days, uh, but it could be in hours, it could be in weeks, depending on how complex and large your project is. Um, on the top left, we're going to have the early start number. So because our duration is in days, this is going to refer to uh, the early start of, you know, the earliest start in terms of days that this activity can begin. Um, so we always start with zero. And that will make sense uh, later. Um, and then we calculate it forward. Uh, when is the earliest this activity can start within a particular sequence? Opposite this on the top right, we're going to have the early finish. Uh, and this is just the earliest the activity can finish. Um, and this is just, again, very simple maths. You take the early start, you add the duration, you get your early finish. So if your activity is estimated to take two days, 
and you have the early start which is going to be zero if it's a starting activity uh, zero plus two uh, and you have two so your early finish would then be two your earliest your finish is going to be on the second day uh, on the bottom right we have late finish which is the latest the project can finish without delaying the project uh, sorry the latest the activity can finish without delaying the project as a whole and we're going to discuss how we calculate this on a reverse pass uh, and to the bottom left we have the late start which is the latest the project uh, the activity can start without delaying the project and in the left middle square we are we're going to have the slack which is the number of days in this case uh, that the activity can actually be delayed uh, without causing an overall project delay so that may make some sense but we are going to run through the example um, as well uh, so if we look at our, our simple example here, we have four activities, we have them laid out in sequence, we have activities B and C that can be run in parallel, uh, and we can add to the middle right column from our activity list, we can put the estimated duration in each. So we see for activity A, we have three days, activity B, four days, activity C, six days, and then activity D, two days. Um, so those are the two things, the activity code uh, and the layout of the network diagram, plus the estimated duration that we can put into any uh, 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 any project at the start of critical path analysis. From here, I said that every project we start with zero, uh, and that's because uh, you may think it's logical to start on day one, uh, but it does knock everything out, out of whack. So you see activity A takes three days. So if we had the early start as day one, then our early finish, one plus three, would actually be four. Uh, so you start with zero in order to make sure that there's a consistent understanding of, uh, of what early finish and early start actually results in. So we put zero here at the beginning. Uh, of activity A top left so the earliest activity A can start is day zero and then if we add three to that so activity A is estimated to take three days the earliest activity A can finish is going to be day three uh, and now because activities B and C can only begin when activity A has finished that means we can carry over this number three to activities B and C's early start. So the earliest activity B and C can start are both day three. And here we add the estimated duration of each activity on and that gives us our early finish. So acti activity B's early finish is seven because that's three plus four. And activity C's early finish is nine, that's three plus six. The next activity along our sequence now is activity D. Uh, now, activity D needs both activity A, uh, sorry, activity B and C to have finished before it can start. So activity D cannot start before both preceding activities have finished. Um, and that's true of whether you have two preceding activities or you have 10 preceding activities. All of the preceding activities must be finished before the next one can begin. So here we can see that activity B finishes on day 7, but activity C finishes on day 9. So we can't actually begin activity D until activity C has finished. So we can put in the top left-hand column, uh, on the top left-hand square of activity D, uh, the earliest that activity D can begin, the early start, is actually day 9. Uh, so that's what we have in the early start column. And then we add the estimated two days it will take for activity D to finish. And that gives us an early finish of day 11. So this tells us that the estimated duration of the project, if all the activities start at the earliest start that they can, is going to be day 11. Now, we want to understand if there's any slack in our network diagram. So we're going to have the late finish and the late start for activity B, D being the exact same. So the activity you end on, so the finishing activity will always have the same early start, early finish as it has late start, late finish. So we put the late start as uh, day nine and the late finish as day 11. And now what we do, what's called a reverse pass. So we've just done a forward pass, which is left to right. 
early start, early finish, left to right through our network diagram. And now we're going to do a reverse pass, which is going to be late finish, late start, right to left in the reverse direction. Uh, so then we do everything in reverse. So the earlier, so the latest activity D can start. The late start for activity D is day nine. So we're going to carry that across to the late finish for activity B and activity C. So we're going to put day nine in the bottom right square of both activity B and activity C. And now we're going to subtract the estimated duration for both of those tasks. So activity B is estimated to take four days. So we do nine take away four. And activity C is estimated to, to take six days. So we'll take nine take away six. And that gives us our late start. So the latest activity B can start is day five. And the latest activity C can start is day three. Now to carry this backwards to activity A, which is a reverse pass, so we're going to take the lowest number, uh, so the earliest uh, late start, which is going to be activity C's day three, and we're going to place that in the late finish co uh, a square of activity A, of the preceding activity. Um, so that's the uh, latest activity A can finish. And we do the same, we subtract three from three, which gives us zero, so we've got zero for the late start. So your uh, starting activity should be the same top and bottom. So the early start, early finish should be the same as a late start and late finish. And for your ending activity in your project, the same uh, applies. So for activity D, which is our ending activity, uh, our early start and early finish, day 9 and 11, are the same as our late start and late finish, days 9 and 11 as well. Uh, but there may be variances in the activities between them, and this is where we can get our slack. So what we can do here to calculate slack uh, is to take your early start and your late start and see if there's any difference there. So we calculate this middle left box uh, on our activities um, by taking the early start and the early, uh, subtracting it from the early finish and seeing if there's a difference. Um, and what we can see if we do that here uh, is that for most of these activities it's the same uh, but not for all. So if we subtract the two we find that for A, C and D the early start and the late start are the same but for activity B the earliest we can start is day three but the latest we can start is actually day five. So that means we've actually identified slack. So this means activity B can start on day three or it can start on day five without delaying the project. The project will still finish on day 11. It won't finish any later because we've delayed activity B by two days. So that's what we refer to as slack. Sometimes you'll find the literature is also referred to as, as float, uh, but that's slack within the network diagram. But that also tells us that while we can delay activity B by a couple of days without negatively impacting our project completion, we can't do the same for activities A, C or D. Activities A, C and D have the exact same early start and late start figures. So that means that we, if we delay activities A or activity C, that means that we are delaying our project as a whole. So therefore, we have found our critical path. So this is the critical path. The only activity there with Slack is activity B. So any activity that does not have Slack is going to be part of the critical path. So here is A, C and D, and you represent it as it is on the top of the video here. Uh, A going into C, going into D, that is your critical path. So these are the activities that you have to pay very, very close attention to because if there's any delays to these activities, then your project is going to be late. Whereas with activity B, which is not part of the critical path, and there is slack in activity B, that means that you're able to actually have a bit of a delay to activity B without actually delaying the end of your project. So that's what we're looking for critical path or those activities that have to be very carefully monitored because a delay to any of those activities means a delay to your project as a whole.